Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Coming up, we take a look at your options for managing Windows 10 devices using traditional management strategies with Configuration Manager and cloud-based modern management with Microsoft Intune. We explore the end-to-end -end life cycle, from new ways to deploy Windows PCs without having to create your own images, to new options for keeping your users productive while configuring and securing your company's Windows 10 devices. joined today by Mark Florida, an expert in traditional Windows management with Configuration Manager and modern management with Microsoft Intune. Mark, welcome. Hey, it's great to be on the show. So to start off with the release of Windows 10, there have been lots of enhancements that expand what's possible in terms of the management of both the main joint PCs with Configuration Manager and Azure Active Directory joint PCs with Microsoft Intune. Can you bring us up to date on what's been happening in this space? Oh yeah, sure. So last December, we released a new version of Configuration Manager. We call it our current branch. It aligns with the Windows 10 servicing model. Let me show you what that kind of looks like here in the demo. Um, as you can kind of see, we've implemented some new features aligned with Windows 10, such as the ability to measure your health state of your Windows 10 devices. So we're basically kind of keeping up and lighting up new features that come here with Windows 10. The other thing that we've been also sort of working on is making it much easier to upgrade. And this new release of uh, Configuration Manager has been one of our fastest updating releases ever. We already have it installed on over 44 million clients and over 23,000 different customers. And that's not all. With Windows 10 and the enhancements that have been made in the Inbox MDM agent, we've also enhanced Intune to better leverage those capabilities. So uh, let me show you what that looks like here. What we've done is modified Intune to incorporate many of the new policies that are now available in Windows 10. So what you see right here is an ability to uh, configure these new policies such as uh, set an addition upgrade, which is super critical for customers who need to, you know, basically move from, uh, you know, a lower end SKU to a much higher end SKU. You can set up additional policies here like a VPN profile and other changes as well. And this last piece here, which is a you know, very significant change, is around Windows Information Protection. So Windows Information Protection really affords a customer the ability to protect their corporate information uh, to ensure that it doesn't move out of their environment without their knowledge or their control. I know a lot of people watching this are actually considering their longer term management strategies. Some folks may be looking to shift uh, some of their management capability to the cloud. Other folks might be more comfortable with sticking to traditional configuration manager. How should people be weighing up all the different management options? Sure. You know, whether you choose traditional or modern, for us it's really about lowering the overall cost of managing your Windows devices. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of one or the other. I think what customers will find is that given, given their environment, they can likely apply both in different situations. So Mark, can you give us some examples of what those decision points really are? Yes, there are three key areas. The first being your imaging, how you get Windows 10 deployed. The second being applications and identity. And the third, software updates. Cool. OK, let's, uh, let's deep dive in. What about the, the first of those, provisioning? Yeah, so if I look at a typical imaging model today, let's face facts, it's pretty heavy. You have to basically get a machine in, you have to re-image it, you have to apply all your new drivers, it takes hours, usually requires a lot of manpower. Um, what we've done with uh, Windows 10 is we now allow you to get devices deployed you know, much more quickly and much easier for the end user uh, to be able to work uh, off those devices. Let me kind of show you what this looks like in, in a demo. So what you're seeing here on the screen is really just a device that comes right out of box. Mm -hmm. And what you'll notice is a real key change here is I have an option to join this device to Azure Active Directory which is obviously new because you know, most people are joining them to local Azure or local uh, Active Directory. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter in my uh, credentials. These are the same credentials I would use for, let's say, accessing corporate email. So the end user is very familiar with having to do this. And now behind the scenes what's going on is this device is joining to Azure Active Directory. And as part of that, we're going to start to now get management policies coming down. The very first policy that you see here is uh, multi-factor authentication, mm -hmm. and this is a um, you know this is a good way to validate that my identity is who I am when I'm trying to log into this device. So I'll enter that kind of code there to attest that you know yes this truly is myself. And this next piece that you're seeing here is where Intune comes into play. So this pin isn't part of the 
regular out-of-box experience. This is actually Intune policy telling Windows to require a PIN. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the beauty of it is that to the end user, they don't really know that they're you know going through a real disjointed experience at all. But it's getting the device prepped and ready for them with the right policy so that the you know the IT administrator can feel secure that this device is protected. So now what I'm going to do is kind of show you a few other kind of cool things. Uh, the first being is you'll notice a, substan a substantial change here which is that a typical uh, system when it comes back up you'll notice that it's being managed through local Active Directory not the case here this is now being managed through Azure Active Directory and then probably the last kind of thing I want to show you is it's right here so what you notice here is this device also has the configuration manager agent installed on it so what we've done is we've really integrated the management experience for a customer so that they can use Intune to help provision this device. They can use Azure Active Directory to help get this device registered and managed, but they can also use Configuration Manager in this environment if they still need traditional management scenarios. That seems like a pretty cool idea. So what did you actually have to do to make that work? Well, all I really had to do was go into the Intune console and uh, use Intune to provision the uh, SCCM client. You know, CCM exec just needed to be installed, and that was it. So the second area that you spoke of was around identity and applications. What are the decision points that you suggest for folks here? Sure. It really just comes down to technology. It's a, it's a comparison between uh, domain join and what's available there and what's available with Azure Active Directory. So when I speak with customers, it generally comes down to what are you using group policy for? If you're using it for security settings and making sure that those policies are adhered to, then really take a look at what's available in Windows 10 with the Inbox MDM agent because it can cover many, if, if not all, those needs. And then with applications, it just comes down to the type of applications that you are deploying. And if you're primarily using uh, web applications, SaaS applications, then I th you will find that Azure Active Directory provides many of the same needs that you're accomplishing today with your domain join machines, such as your ability to kind of authenticate and attest who the user is. So I guess there you'd be looking at Intune as the management uh, provider in that case. Can you show us what this looks like? Oh yeah, sure, love to. So for a little bit of context, this device that we're on right now is, uh, has just a local account. So it's not managed, it's just kind of, you can almost think of it as like a you know, home PC or you know, BYOD device that was brought to work. So what I'm going to do is attempt to access my work email. Okay. So go up here into Outlook. Got to do a couple things that are just pretty standard, which I think most people are used to, which is you know, typing yeah, in your credentials right. so you can get to your email. Okay. And you'll notice I'm blocked. Mm -hmm. And that's by design. And the reason being is because I've previously enacted a policy in Intune to prevent access uh, to email unless the device is managed. So what I'm going to do is now make that happen. And what I'm doing is something very similar to what you saw in the previous demo, which is adding your Azure Active Directory account to this device. So I'll click Done here. And now what you'll notice is there's a work account that's been added to the machine. I should be able to kind of go back and mm -hmm. now get a look at my email. Close that out. Oh, so still can't get access. Now, the reason I kind of showed this is just to sort of make a key point that it's important that the device is fully configured and compliant before getting access. So what you'll notice here is that I've now that I've given the system a little bit of time to behave, uh, the browser when on first launch is now showing me my email. It logged me in using single sign-on. That's all possible because the device is joined to Azure Active Directory. And what it, you know, I can kind of see here, I got my work email and I'm good to go. And that's only possible because of our conditional access checks were now validated. Um, and I can you know, be sure that the device is trusted before allowing the end user to get access to corporate information. Excellent. It looks like there might be some extra policies that have applied there as well. I can see a little briefcase icon up there. Oh, yes. So what that is is Windows information protection. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the Edge browser is, is uh, defined as a managed application. It's mm -hmm. one that the kind of company has, you know, kind of full control over is a good way to think about it. So what's kind of neat about this feature is let me kind of go down to the secret email that you sent me here. And you can see here that there's some you know, text on our you know, secret recipe that we want to make sure stays protected. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is attempt to move that information out of a corporate managed application, a little briefcase, and move that over to a non-protected uh, or personal application. So let me launch here Notepad. And in this case, Notepad has not been declared as, as a um, corporate uh, application. You know, thus, you don't see that briefcase or anything like that. 
But what you'll notice when I attempt to hit, uh, hit paste is that the system is prompting me, you know, do you want to allow this to happen? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I as the end user, I can say, sure, I want to make that happen. I presume it gets audited if you actually say that you want to um, change that to personal data. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it actually is richer than that. You know, I, this is, it would have been a pretty lame demo to show you, but you can actually make this as an IT administrator. You can just block it completely. So if you don't want to allow the information to go out, you can stop that. If you want to, you can make this silent. So I could paste it out into a uh, personal application, but continue to audit that as well. So there's a different, different kind of sets of options depending on who your user base and your scenarios are. So what I'll do is just sort of allow this paste to happen. So now you see it went through. Mm -hmm. So now you're audit message that you uh, described earlier will be recorded. And this last piece is to kind of show you how it would work with just a fully you know, managed application. In this case, WordPad. You can see it's got the briefcase up above. That means okay. it's a corporate managed application. Got to paste the information in there. And that went on without any end user intervention. So in summary, if you're still needing the complexity of domain join, you can continue to use Configuration Manager for those devices. And at the same time, blend this with simpler, more cost-effective management with mobile device management. Now, Mark, you also mentioned software updates. Yes, so the uh, two previous areas were really a choice that a customer can make. The reason I call out software updates is because of the new model that has been released with Windows 10. Um, they've moved to a cumulative update model, which greatly simplifies the update process for a customer to keep their Windows devices, you know, frankly, up to date. Yep. And um, it's, it's something that a customer should really take a look at if they haven't already done so already. So why don't I give you a glimpse of what That'd that looks great. like. So what I'm going to do is show you Configuration Manager, where we have built an experience in there for you to manage uh, Windows 10 servicing. So there's a few kind of key concepts I'll talk about, which is that you can define uh, how successful a deployment is, as well as monitor in your environment the various uh, levels of Windows that you might have deployed mm -hmm. and track the progress there. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can create a ring. And what a ring is, is it's really a, an ability for you to stage the rollout of a given new update that Windows releases. This is um, very valuable when you think about things like application compatibility testing. So what I'll do is create a, basically a service plan for you and a ring, in essence, to, to get the update out, out the door. So first thing I gotta do here is type in a name, just Windows plan. Now what I'm doing is picking the set of devices that I wanna target. So New York branch is uh, the one that we have just a small number of users for and I then get to select what type of update from Windows I want to deploy. So I'll choose the business one, and now I will create that. Once that's created, let me show you a little bit of the internals of what a servicing plan looks like. A lot of it for a config manager customer is gonna be very familiar, and some will be different. So here's your deployment settings. Your servicing plan, again, is really just the group of devices you want to target. And this is probably the most significant change if you're used to software updates management and configuration manager. What we built is an experience where you can choose whether you want uh, updates to go out right away when Windows releases them. That would be the zero option. Mm -hmm. Or you can put a buffer in place. And uh, this basically allows you to maybe wait for the rest of the world to test out an update before you decide to take it on yourself. And then you can just automate this away. You don't have to sort of come back on day 52 and say, let me go do a manual deployment. Let us do that for you and take that over. So the first thing that comes right to the top of my mind when I think about Windows 10 is that there is a difference between uh, feature updates and security updates. Does this cover both of those? Oh yeah, absolutely it does. You know, the same, again, it goes back to that same kind of mechanic that we have in Configuration Manager uh, is used for both. So you can be, you can deploy your cumulative updates with this, you can deploy your critical updates, we got that covered. That sounds amazing, actually. It's a really, uh, really great set of features for being able to do software updates and deployments in line with Windows servicing model. So that covers uh, the core management scenarios around provisioning, identity and applications, and software updates. What else is in store? Well, we're going to continue to expand what we do with MDM management with Intune. Uh, and we're also going to continue to invest in Configuration Manager, all with the premise that you know we want to be able to support the management needs that our customers have. And we realize that there's a blend of both a need for modern management and traditional management. And we'll keep investing in both to make sure our customers are happy. Cool. And how can people learn more? 
So, as you start to roll out Windows 10 for your organization, it is a great time to familiarize yourself with the management strategies, and you can learn more in the link below. Great, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the show, and keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest in tech updates. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.